playing the biggest game of their lives. Let's join our commentators. It's Lenny Lawrence who knows all about Middlesbrough, of course, alongside John Hell. John. Well, this match always looked like being crucial, but it's now going to have a huge bearing on promotion with Reading's victory over Bolton last night. A Barnsley victory becomes imperative for their playoff hopes. If Berra win, they go five points clear at the top. And at the age of 38, Barnsley coach Malcolm Shotton is asked to lead from the front. He has to play today because Jerry Taggart has a groin strain and failed a fitness test this morning. With manager Danny Wilson also out through suspension, this is the Barnsley side on duty. Neil Redford stepped into Wilson's midfield boots. Darren Sheridan will play a left back in the usual formation with five at the back. The bench looks full of youth with Chris Jackson and Glyn Hurst occupying the numbers 12 and 14 shirts. Well, Viv Anderson was Barnsley's manager 12 months ago. Today he returns to Oakwell and just like shotting for Barnsley, is asked to fulfill a playing role with ex-Sheffield Wednesday centre-back Nigel Pearson out with a head injury. Brian Robson, Derek White and Robbie Musto are also missing from Borough's regular lineup. Chris Morris returns at left back and the familiar figure of John Hendry is recalled to partner record signing Jan Olga Fjortoft in attack. So Fleming with that ball forward. And a really sloppy conditions. It really is a it's almost waterlogged. Lenny, your feelings about the pitch for a start? Just about playable, I think. Uh, the rain continues to fall. It's a first foul there against Alan Moore. Uh, just about playable. But it... And a booking inside the first 15 seconds, I would say, of this game for Steve Davis for the challenge on Moore. Well, they certainly don't want to concede a goal in the first minute. Barnsley, that will be the worst possible start for them and the best conceivable for Middlesbrough. Dave Watson left on his line, here is Pollock. And they decided to play it short even though they had four men waiting in the middle. And as a result of which, they lose the opportunity. You'd have thought with a great big following win behind them there, they'd have whipped that in, but uh, they chose to play short as you say. And Barnsley do win, good possession now, just inside the Borough half. knocked into space and there was Sheridan coming just getting a foot in and look at that Clayton Blackmore not even able to reach the halfway line with his pass now Bullock who had such an outstanding game against Portsmouth last week he's one of those who just seems to keep on going well the ball is going to hold up horrendously uh, on this swampy surface Game started off at 100 miles an hour, as you would expect. Fiercely competitive, challenges flying in. Be interesting to see which team settles first. It's wet, it's wild, it's windy. It's Oakwell on a Saturday afternoon, and the eyes of the country on this match. Radio 5 have chosen it as their main game of the day, which shows the importance of Barnsley against Middlesbrough. Barnsley at start of play in sixth spot, Middlesbrough at the very top which is just where you want to be at this stage of the season. Well, you've got to be a hardy soul to come and watch football in England at times. And, uh, it's a, definitely a man's day today. Fjort off, nice little interplay with Hendry. See, Hendry gets himself in that position where he comes just off the defenders, and if they don't come with him, he can get it down and run at him or link up like he or try to like he did there. It's, he's dangerous in those situations. Neatly played away by Barnsley and they've created some space down the right where Nicky Eden now finds himself moving well inside the Middlesbrough half. They've two in the middle and uh, across this map by a Middlesbrough head. Releases Fjortov. Through the middle goes Hendry. And he was offside. Good opportunity there but the cross didn't beat the first defender. So they'll be disappointed with that, you know, with uh, with Peyton and Little waiting in the middle there. That was a good opportunity. Oh. Well, it's not the most comfortable of conditions for a goalkeeper. Look at that. Watson's not got 30 yards with that clearance. 
fortuitously the ball struck the back of uh, Brendan O'Connell but he's played it directly to Cox Middlesbrough if anything stroking the ball around uh, rather more comfortably than Barnsley driving run by Pollock and now Blackmore to try and tee up a decent cross Fjortoff was coming in behind Davis a little flick of Davis's head took away the danger oh dear and that's a bad challenge from Eden and that's the second time that Alan Moore has uh, managed to uh, get a defender into trouble I don't mean that badly either I mean it's no. just the way he wriggles inside he them. had quick feet there and he shifted the ball quickly and uh, he caught the defender out this time tackle good free kick Cavill, Cavill whip this in yeah surely they didn't take that opportunity when they had one earlier Kavanagh mm. poor uh, free kick needed to be in the air really didn't beat the first defender I know when it was in the air Fjortov looked a long way offside and the, the lines would never raise his flag which to the ire Dis of the fans plus to the displeasure of the Barnsley fans Two men left it to one another. Henry's got Fjortov moving. Fjortov to good ball for Blackmore. And the drive, the shot sailing about a two, three feet over the crossbar there. That was a very good opening for Blackmore. Good opportunity there. Nice link up between John Henry and Fjortov. Nice, good vision. Just touches it across there. Uh, Clayton Butler had to get his feet right quickly because the ball came at him quickly. Couldn't keep it down. Went over the bar. First chance to Middlesbrough. Missed. Henry, I think one or two Borough fans thought he might have been wrestled there by Davis, but the referee said play on, play on they do with Kavanagh there and with Alan Moore now trying to create space for an opening and John Henry had just strayed no more than about a couple of feet offside. Yeah, that, that's where they're good there, nice little interpassing movement, Alan Moore comes in field and joins and links up. And they've just tried to put Henry in and as you say he's just about a yard offside. I reckon he's due a goal, John Henry, F 15 he's got but... Uh, Surprising he's been in and out the side, you know, he may have been injured, but uh, he wasn't in, which, which did come as a great surprise to me. Brian Robson was trying the combination of Uwe yeah. Fuchs, the German, yeah. and Jan Oga Fjortov. Right, who's, um, to be fair, Fuchs has got a terrific goal-scoring record since he's been on loan at Borough. Nine goals in 12 matches, Fuchs, who's on the bench today. Barnsley's throwing. Connell. It found Bullock rather fortunately, but that doesn't matter. Here's Eden now. Two in the middle way. Peyton and Little. Not tall men though. Coming in the back post, Sheridan. And he was in a great position there. And uh, it's almost won back by Bullock. Well, Sheridan got, got into a great position oh. at the back of the defender. That was a good attack that uh, broke well down the right and a good cross. And, and Sheridan got to just across Blackmore there, it was just a caught out a little bit, he nearly got enough on it to get it down, but not quite. And, uh, Barnsley now six points behind Reading, psychologically that's not great for them, they do definitely need to win today. And O'Connell seemed to dive in there, and uh, so did Kavanagh. And uh, O'Connell will certainly be spoken to there. Yeah, Cav got there first and Connell's gone in with his studs up. A little bit late, not deliberately late, but definitely late. Foul, no booking, quite right referee. Kavanagh's just got his place back in the side in recent weeks. Yeah, he's another one who's come through the youth policy. It's interesting looking across, looking at Middlesbrough's midfield. Uh, Cav came through the ranks. He came from Ireland, home farm originally, and he's... He's come through the youth ranks and looks like establishing himself. Alan Moore from Ireland through the youth ranks and also Jamie Pollock through the youth ranks, who's a local lad. So that's, uh, that's very healthy from Borough's point of view. Nice for Lenny Lawrence to reflect on as former manager of Middlesbrough, of course. Nice to have given them all a chance. Peyton, but he's nobody to direct the headed to. It's easy for Viv Anderson to knock one forward, straight onto the chest of that other uh, venerable defender, Malcolm Shot, who's making light of his 38 years at the moment. Certainly is. Uh, he'll take a breather when he's got to do, won't he? Yeah. I saw Viv Anderson play his first match for Middlesbrough down at West Brom about three weeks ago, and he had a terrific game. It's not a bad pass. 
It's interesting because this is the left back pushed in, and obviously he's got to be dealt with by Clayton Blackmore, the way that Bl uh, Barnsley play, and uh, they're trying to find him one against one. Into the area there went O'Connell, and uh, that was Little trying to win it. There's a shot from Neil Redford, and it spins away, and Eden might still get something. Down penalty. he goes. That's a penalty. No, it's a goal kick. It's a goal kick. Mr Kane, to be fair to him, was close to it and pointed, but when he was pointing, he did make it deliberate that it was for a goal kick and not a penalty. He's gone, he's miles away from the ball, but the ball's over the line virtually by the time he's gone down. I make the referee right. But nevertheless, a, a heart-stopping moment for all Borough fans, I would think. Yeah, Barnsley there hoping for a penalty. It's quite right, though, the ref. seen this ref before this season, fully up in the Vauxhall Conference where he was refereeing a match at Staley Bridge and he had a, a very good night that and he's one of those fellows who looks imposing. Yeah, well so far so good, he certainly hasn't made any ricks so far. He wouldn't want to in a game of this importance. No, that's right. You know, as we get towards the end of a season, every decision becomes critical. Yeah. You know, and uh, Barnsley suffering today for... The loss of uh, Danny Wilson, sent off at Wolves a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, Wilson may well have been in the right that the decision was wrong, but I'm afraid you can't complain these days. And he's paying a severe penalty for it. Danny Wilson will miss the next two matches against Sheffield United and Oldham as well. And now Marky! his side... Marky! Marky! And you see him uh, getting an order in there. Henry slipped his man, John Henry. A cross ball which has to be... Oh, he should have been put out. Instead of which, Cavanagh nearly scores for Middlesbrough. Why didn't the defender head the ball out for the corner? I think he may have lost the flight with the wind, but uh, he's tried to clear it against the Gale Force win, and it's dropped lovely there. And uh, Barrow pushed. There's John Henry. He's turned his man there. Lovely little chip. Stood it up well. Got first to it. Got it up, but not very far. And there's Cav... It looked like it came off a Barnsley defender there and went wide, but he's given a goal kick. There's the header up, didn't carry. Yeah, it came off uh, Malcolm Shutton. More. He tries to slip Barnsley open with the ball to Hendry. So he's rolling infield no more, and he's finding himself in that little space between the midfield and the, and the back three of Barnsley. And if he gets in and there starts running it or putting Fjortoft or Hendry in, Barnsley are going to have a problem. They need to get hold of him. But in their system, there's nobody to pick him up. Here he goes again. What I want to know, Lenny, and you as a manager will tell me, has he done that off his own back, or has Brian Robson got a message out to him? I think he's done it off his own back. Let's see what Barnsley can do off theirs now. The ball was aimed to Andy Payton, just didn't get there from Little. What's been good about Viv Anderson and Steve Vickers is when there has been danger threatening around the edge of their area, their reading of the game and their anticipation, like there with Viv Anderson, when to step up and when to get in front, has been first class. Oops. There's Bullock. Got good feet as well. Chance for Little to knock one across here. Oh, and Redfern met it in a great position and angled it well wide. Knows he should have done better with that. Classic opportunity there, the best cross of the game from Andy Payton. He's beaten the defenders, bent away from the goalkeeper, and he just wants to side foot it onto the target. Maybe the wind's taken it and it's, uh, it's carried away over the bar. But a great opportunity there for Barnsley. Show what they can do. Yeah, he's just mistimed it there. He's normally a better finisher. Yes, he is, yeah. He's timed his run and everything right, because he hasn't got the right contact on the ball. Here's a chance at the other end immediately for Fjortoft, and he's onside this time. Shot and covering. Fjortoft goal. the shot. Fjortoft the goal. Great goal. That's why they signed him. Record signing. The fans love him. Fjortoft's second goal since he joined from Swindon Town before the deadline. And what a critical goal it may be as Middlesbrough seek a place in the Premier League. He's on the ball there, the defender's not close enough to him, he's got it out of his feet and got his shot away before the defender can get a block in. Everybody just seemed uh, shell-shocked there and stood like statues. There he is, he shifted it there, little dummy, but the defender will be disappointed he didn't get across and get a block in there. Just after Barnsley have missed the best chance of the game. That's football. 
great finish from Jan Orger Fjortov, the Norwegian international, his 28th goal. No wonder he's the top marksman in the first division. They'll be disappointed with that, Barnsley. Didn't look to be a terrible amount of danger there, and he's got himself turned and got the shot away without really a challenge coming in. In sharply Blackmore, and Fjortov turns his man well. And then it's lobbed forward. It Beyond Blackmore that time by Pollock. Sheridan. Good left footed player, Sheridan, and he used that left foot to bring O'Connell into the match. The ball eventually finds his way out fortuitously to Eden. Redford now. He's got a good long range shot on him if he can use it. Produce one of these clammy conditions. And uh, here's O'Connell with a final effort. And I think that's the first real save that Miller's yeah. made. Nice build up there, but they got, you know, they're getting clogged down. There's a lot of players very close to each other there. Some nice movement and some nice link up. But didn't get enough power behind the shot. What Barnsley are going to have to do is get some width into their game, I think, because it's getting so wet down the middle and play so congested there. How he's going to do that, or if he does, it will be interesting to see. He's got two youngsters on the bench in Glenn Hurst and Chris Jackson. Jackson's a front player. Danny Wilson did say he wanted an attacker on the bench. But he was forced into his choice of substitutions with the withdrawal of Jerry Taggart. Malcolm Shotton had to play. Redfern lunges at the ball, doesn't get it. So Shotton slips one forward for Sheridan. And we're getting very close to half time now. Redfern might think of unleashing a shot. That's what he does. It's a disappointing one. All seem to be going the wrong way somehow. And it's half time at Oakwell. A very good half for Middlesbrough and their travelling fans. Jan Orga Fjortov, their record signing, gave them the lead eight minutes before half time. Barnsley have a lot to do to stay in this match and the chase for a playoff place. Half time, Barnsley nil. Middlesbrough one. It's to go, and I'm sure these players will be very happy to get into a hot bath after this one's over. Is it really the cricket season? <laughs> Ferocious day at Barnsley. And uh, the home team a goal behind. We'll see if Danny Wilson has managed to impart a message to change the course of this game. No substitutions made by either side. I think this has been quite a fortunate strip for Middlesbrough this season, this new green strip. They've won away seven times and uh, looking for number eight today. So. Certainly it has, yeah. What they're good at, uh, Borough, is they'll hold their shape and keep their discipline now um, and invite Barnsley to come and break them down, I think. They've done, they do that very well. There's a back pass which has got through, so it's not held up too badly. Well, among interested observers here today are Howard Wilkinson. Looks to be sporting a new trilby there. And uh, if you come further this side of the picture, Kenny Dalgleish. About to win the championship, I would have thought, with Blackburn Rovers. They've done a great job, uh, those two managers, this season. Leeds on the verge of a place in Europe. And uh, Dalgleish, of course, uh, won the title with Liverpool. And only two men in history, I think, have won it with two different clubs. Brian Clough's one. I'm just struggling to think of the other one at the moment. And it was a fellow, Lenny, who uh, was manager of Huddersfield Town at one stage of his career. A long Ooh. time before you and I. Yeah. Herbert Chapman. Herbert Chapman, of course. Huddersfield and Arsenal. Man, it's nice when you've got a few million to spend, isn't it? It does make life somewhat easier. Throwing for Barnsley, Sheridan. Peyton. Up it goes from Davis, and then a little touch from Peyton. Redford now. Davis, it's not a bad it? ball, it's a header, it's a goal! Andy Little, 1-1! What a great pass it was from Steve Davis. And poaching in there was Andy Little and Barnsley have got their just desserts. It's that good layoff there. It's that diagonal ball to the back of the defence. They nearly scored from him in the first half. 
He's got the wrong side of Coxie and beyond Clayton Blackmore. Alan Miller's made a valiant effort but can only palm it into the net. Barr will be desperately disappointed to concede a goal in that manner, really, but a terrific cross and a great downward header. It's a superb what cross. What a good Davis. little ball in that was, and what a good run. And he's just got enough on it with the wind uh, to get it into the net. Andy Little becomes Barnsley's top scorer this season. That's his 13. And they're roaring now. Got a game on now. Yeah, I was uh, just about to say that... I was just about to say that Burrow had a bit of a stranglehold on it, you know, and it didn't, they, didn't, they appeared to be coasting, but uh, it's a different ball game. That there it is again. So they, see, Burrow's back four are playing quite narrow, and they're leaving the Clayton Blackmore and Alan Moore to track the, uh, the Barnsley fullbacks if they come back. And what's happened there is that for the goal, he's got in the space between uh, Coxie and uh, Clayton Blackmore. They use that diagonal ball quite a bit, Barnsley, to good effect. There you had a shot of Danny Wilson and Eric Wynn Stanley. It's funny how it perks you up as a manager, and all of a sudden you've something to say again. It, they've gone a bit quiet, haven't yes, they? Yes, they have gone a bit quiet, yeah. Eden, this is a good spell for Barnsley. A little knockback here for Redford. The touch is now to Bullock. Is he going to get a goal? It's first for the club. Oh, almost first, by a whisker. First time Viv Anderson's got out, sucked out of position there. He's come out to make a challenge and uh, missed it. And it's like the defence has opened up and he's done well there. He's got the ball out of his feet, struck it well, about a couple of feet wide. Well, I said last week that he's bound to get his first ever goal before long because he's a confident player, struck it well. Yeah, he did, yeah. Well, the Barnsley fans are really with something to sing about now. Redfern gets stuck in, Sheridan lays the ball forward to the goal scorer a little, out wide left is Bullock. And he's coming more into the game and winning this corner for Barnsley. What he's doing, Bullock, is he's drifting from uh, central positions out wide. They haven't got any natural wit, and he's causing a few problems there. They've got their game going, Barnsley. This will be whizzed in under the bar, I've got no doubt. It's a great atmosphere at Oakwell. Redford with the corner. A little flick on, oh, appeals for handball, not given. Uh, it was going so quickly, it must have struck him, I imagine, yeah. if it was the hand. But again, you've got to credit Danny Wilson, Barnsley's manager, because he's really pepped them up with his half-time talk. And he's changed the game. It looks like it. Redford to Payton. Playing when the wind is helping Barnsley as well, I think. Vickers just gets in an important header. Anderson Bode puts the ball straight out, much to the delight of the home fans. And I think he saw the funny side of that as well. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure that, uh, that we won't let that affect him, player of his vast experience. But they're rocking a little bit, Middlesbrough, at the moment. Hendry has picked it up from Anderson's header. Fjortov looking to refind him. Unable to do so, but Pollock was there. And he gets Hendry moving. Used his body well to screen the ball. Clayton Blackmore, the three in the middle. Decent ball. Oh, oh. the underside of the bar from Jamie Pollock. And it couldn't be closer than that. Well, Dave Watson would have had no hope. It was a thunderous effort. And here comes Fjortov into the area again, cleared by Fleming. What a terrific shot, though. That's a great move, that. Clayton Blackmore, a terrific cross, and he's in the six-yard box there, Jamie, at full stretch, and it's smashed off the underside of the bar at about 100 miles an hour. Very unfortunate, that could have won the game for him, that. It certainly warmed up the afternoon. He's onside here, Hendry. Just couldn't control it. Otherwise, he looked a certain scorer. Well, they must have been caught square there for Hendry to get into so yeah, much space. Maybe they were looking for offside and it didn't it didn't materialise. Well, let's have a look at this incident again. It's Clayton Blackmore's cross. Great cross. They're three against three in the box. But Jamie's got just beyond his man there, look, and stretched at full stretch, and it's 
as I say, rebounded off the bar. Most unfortunate. Got a game on now, a bit of end-to-end -end stuff. Made the net shiver, that one, didn't it? Yeah, real end-of-season stuff, this. The point's vital to both these sides. Nicky Eden now. And I think he changed his mind at the last yeah. minute there. You're a real hero if you score with one of those on a day like yeah. today. So he couldn't make up his mind whether he was trying to find Sheridan with that diagonal ball or whether he was having a shot there. Turned towards his own goal, conceded possession. Here's Andy Payton in the area, looks for shot over Miller, just over the bar. Bad mistake by Blackmore. Yeah, he's quite, quite a little square ball there. He's, uh, he's played Andy Payton in, gone at the diagonal run. He's taken a chance with his weaker foot, his left foot, and it's gone just over the bar. Yeah, there's the mistake there. Good little run from Andy Payton, he just couldn't quite keep it down. There are so many strange results at this stage of the season. You know, last week where Chelsea drew at Manchester United, then Manchester City went and won at Blackburn, Hartlepool won at Carlisle, Southend won at uh, Tranmere. Anything can happen. But nobody's going to take maximum points, I don't think, in these closing games. Otherwise, they deserve to go up. Good footwork from Andy Payton. On he goes, up against his old club, of course, Middlesbrough. Yep. Pollock for Middlesbrough, coming more into it. Chris Morris. Down the line, Hendry. Corner. Yeah, well there. yeah Hendry just... Yeah, he's given a free kick, I think. Yes, he has. Two stockily built chaps, John Hendry and Gary Fleming. Yeah, he's gone a bit too far for him. Gary Fleming's trying to usher the ball out, and obviously the referee thought that John's uh, pushed him onto it there. Thought he was a little bit fortunate to get that free kick uh, from in there. Little touch through to Peyton. Oh, swiftly done by Little to win the ball and feed it into the path of Bullock. Now it's a turn here from O'Connell. It just ran away from him. Comes back to Little, though. Eden surely to loop one in. And again, the offside flag raised with a terrific back pass. <laughs> I wonder if he knew that the offside thing was up. I'll tell you what, he's getting a severe telling off from Viv Anderson there because he's dropped in and put him on side. And he's volleyed that back pass back. That was a that was a bit fortunate. That <laughs> we're saying Clayton Blackmore can hit them. Not usually that way. That was a bit fortunate that Viv Anderson is not a happy man there. Hardly one. Middlesbrough one. Everything to play for. Pollock it was who won it, he's released Moore, Henry's going for a gap through the middle, still Moore here, and Moore battles on. Well, the Mirror, Mirror fans are feeling rather optimistically for something there on the edge of the area, I think they thought it might be a handball, but they're still coming here, and Sheridan gets a foot in. Something for the Middlesbrough fans to applaud again now. Actually, the hard lads coming down and standing on the terracing there behind the goal. Cox goes for the throw-in. Cox is still there. Blackmore now. Dolly's one across. Your top shot over and wide. The man who did get Middlesbrough on the score sheet in the first half. Good cross in there. Jortoff's got himself across the front of the defender, got first to the ball, but he can't get he can't uh, do enough to steer it back across the goal or on target. Well, Brian Robson in his first season as the manager of Middlesbrough determined to take them into the Premier League. He took over from you, Lenny, of course. What do you reckon to the job he's done? I think, you know, he inherited a, a good squad of players that are left behind. He's added to, he's had money to add to it. And he's done uh, as well as anybody could expect. Nobody would change positions with him. You know, with his background and his pedigree, he's got the, uh, the you know, the, the chance and the ability to go right to the top. And hopefully, I, I've still got a soft spot for Middlesbrough. Hopefully, take them into the Premier League and keep them in there. 
shotting for Barnsley. Is the time for a winner for either side? Little flick through. Little might be in here. Is this for Marvel? Oh! Well, Andy Little will look back at that and think, why didn't I hit what could have been the winning goal? Because he had all the time in the world, really. The defender down on the ground yeah. could do nothing about it. There's the slip from Vickers. He's in. He's only the goalkeeper in front of him. Hurried it and didn't beat Miller. First semblance of a mistake from Vickers after the has got beaten in the air. He's got it, the ball with the goalie. To, the goalie stood up very well, and at the end of the day, he couldn't get enough on it, and he's just dropped it down and saved it with his right hand, Alan Miller. But he didn't get enough on it really to worry him. But you know, he made it difficult him by standing up for as long as he did. Yes, Miller made a good stop. It wasn't a well hit shot. No, it wasn't. Red Fern. And that really would have given us the last ten minutes, wouldn't it? Would indeed. Here at Barnsley again. Davies has set at one goal. He's got the ball into the danger zone again now. Andy Payton wrestling to get it through, and Vickers can't uh, get a good clearance away, but he does knock it against a Barnsley boot, and it's a goal kick. That wasn't that, was, that wasn't the same as James. Obviously, James was much closer. Jamie Pollock was much closer to the goal for Borough, but nevertheless, uh, it's a bit, it's been even, Stephen, this game on, on chances and play. Well, Danny Wilson has got to throw on a substitute. change he makes here sees the withdrawal of the goal scorer Andy Little and the arrival of Glyn Hurst and there's offside going to be given here over five minutes left Barnsley one Middlesbrough one and a pretty fair reflection I think really there's a nice header though a little nudge through from Hendry takes the ball to Moore and it's going to be an easy clearance for Eden Hendry seems to have got over that little knock he had anyway And Vickers, and the ball stands still in the water for Vickers. He attempts the back pass, and it just had enough on it for Miller to come and clear up to Fjortoft. Well, they won't want to take risks at this stage. No, they won't. I think Barrow will settle for what they've got. Yes. Yes, they'll regard their point very much as a point one. And if they do get it, here is Pollock again. He's good chance. a good second half, and he's got a good ball in, and it clipped off the top of the Barnsley crossbar off the fingertips of Dave Watson. Good run from Pollock again. Was Shows indeed. What a maturing player he is. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's Premier League uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, just on top of the bar there. Bullock on the Peyton offside. They had a good line there, Barrow. That's the umpteenth time they've been caught offside, Barnsley. They've organised that line very well at the back. Andy Payton there just got caught a couple of yards the wrong side. They played very narrow to cope with uh, Barnes's clever interpassing um, and, and their three front players. And they've dealt with it very well, as I said. They've had a good line. Chris Morris. Oops. Held up in the legs, and here's more. Middlesbrough could win it yet. And that was a chance and a good stop from Watson. He's a good goalkeeper. He yeah, stands he well. He's another one who could be on his way to the Premier League. Good reflex save there. But a Middlesbrough corner. If they score from this, they really will believe they're going to be champions. I think so. Middlesbrough's corner. Closing minutes at Oakwell. Forward is Morris. Lost out in the challenge, and it's taken up now under Will. Shoving the back from Pollock, which goes unpunished. 
So Middlesbrough come again with Hendry, and he'll take on the lot of them. And John Hendry into the area, and Watson again comes galloping off his line to effect the stop. Well, that's good old-fashioned British football. Yeah, I think he it? missed a foul there, the referee. I think yeah. Jamie, Jamie Pollock pushed him in the back there, but... Yeah, he's done well, Mr Yes, Kane. yes, yes. Here's the save again. Alan Moore there, caught the defender unawares. Good near post ball. Good reflex save. He's palmed it out, and lucky enough, it's dropped to a Barnsley player. And I think Brian Robson will feel that a point here has been just about right. Fleming forward, trying to get it in behind Vickers. I'm sure every one of these players will be delighted to get off the pitch. It's been a bitterly cold afternoon in Barnsley. Incessant rain. Horrible conditions to play, but they've given it their all. They really have. And there, as Lenny Lawrence said a moment ago, is the man who personifies Middlesbrough. And you've had to be a battler today. Yeah, and he's in his element there, Jamie. And uh, he's, just, he's just been all over the shop today I don't know if there is a man in the match but there's your obvious candidate for one Mr. Kane blows the final whistle. It's a point for Danny Wilson's Barnsley. I'm not sure a point is going to be enough. It's bring on Sheffield United next week now for them. But they've earned that point. Brian Robson there will be thankful to have gone away from Oakwell on a filthy day where the point won for them. Dave Watson there, a hero at Essen Park last month, was a hero again today with a couple of critical saves after Jan Ogafjortov gave Middlesbrough a lead in the first half. Andy Little came back with an early second-half strike, which has won Barnsley a deserved point. The final score, Barnsley won, Middlesbrough won. And coming up later, reaction from this game and the highlights of the other important matches at the top of the Ensley League First Division. Barnsley, 1-1 it finishes, of course. Quite a day, day to remember, really. Let's get some reaction from both camps, starting with the Barnsley manager, Danny Wilson. He's in the dry with John. Danny, at the end of the day, you played well, but it's probably not quite enough. Um, yeah, you could be right. I think we obviously we've got to win all our three games now and, and hope that somebody slips up. But um, we're by no means going to give the fight up. You know, we've still got a, um, a good chance of getting in the playoffs, uh, and we'll approach the games in that, in that manner. It really was a difficult game of British football on the most awful day. Lovely summer's day, wasn't it? Ah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, but I thought the two teams were absolutely tremendous today. I mean, the attitude and the commitment, you know, there was a lot at stake today. Um, and I thought the game was played in, uh, in a good temper. You know, there was no, um, no flare-ups or anything like that. And, and the referee controlled it quite well. You know, so it's, um, it was just down to the commitment to the both players. I thought it was tremendous. Middlesbrough perhaps shaded <coughs> the first half, went mm. ahead at an important stage. But yeah, you did something at half-time to turn it around. Yeah, I think the conditions were, you know, the wind was against us obviously in the first half. We, didn't, we couldn't seem to get out of our half at times. But um, obviously the, the conditions helped the second half with the wind. You know, and, and we managed to keep um, ahead of steam up and kept him in, pinned in their box. Uh, and, you know, both at the end with a goal from Andy Little. If you don't make it, at least I'm sure you can reflect on a very emerging side. You know, you've got a young goalkeeper doing well. Yeah. Andy Little has now come on, Martin Bullock's come on. Martin and Malcolm Shotton as well. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, um, it's it's good times ahead for Burns, I hope. You know, and I think we've shown one or two people now that um, we have got the um, the nucleus of a good young squad, and hopefully we can build it like Sheffield next year. It would have been nice for us to have won today's game to take a right grip on the league. Uh, but we knew that this was going to be a hard game coming to Barnsley. Uh, they've been in very good form of late. Uh, I was just delighted with our lads' uh, form. You know, I thought we slipped up at the goal, but um, other than that, I thought they'd give a very good defensive uh, display. The young stand-in Viv Anderson not doing badly again for you? Yes, Viv, um, you know, he's done very well for us there because obviously with um, Derek White being suspended and Nigel Pearce and not being able to play, um, you know, that was a big miss at the heart of our defence, uh, but Viv did very well. Well, this wasn't by any means, of course, the only big game around the top of Division 1 today. It wasn't the only wet one either. Let's pick up on some of the other action. Starting with a big game at Bramall Lane, Sheffield United against Wolves. Here's John. Yes, it was do or die for United, who simply had to beat Wolves, and they made an ideal start. Carl Witt clattered by Mark Venus's sliding challenge. Dane Weishaus against Mike Stowell. 
and he sent him the wrong way. There's a strong Bradford City connection with Wolves these days, and it was Dean Richards on loan from Valley Parade who set up the equaliser. The ball into the middle, found by Don Goodman, is finished, not the most clinical. Perhaps that's what confused United keeper Alan Kelly. Richards was also involved in Wolves' second goal. He's a certainty to complete the move in the summer, and there's still no better finisher in the first division than Steve Bull. That goal came on 65 minutes. Within eight more, United had hit back a first-ever goal squeezed in by Mark Foran. Wolves need every goal they can get in the bid for promotion, and their 75th of the season, nobody's got more in the division, was down to the bravery of David Kelly diving in for his 22nd of the campaign. The team's produced a dramatic finish at Molyneux in January, and they contrived another one yesterday, Kingsley Black hammering this shot into the side netting. But, just as it seemed, United's last chance had gone. They seized possession from a clearance. They managed to work the ball out to Black. His cross perfect, and Jostan Flo headed his seventh goal of the season. Great game, 3-3. But the memories were somewhat marred by an incident shortly afterwards. The fans spat at the Wolves manager, Graham Taylor, who attempted to make a citizen's arrest. He certainly had the full sympathy of United manager Dave Bassett. This was his reaction on behalf of the club. You know, you, you can live with the abuse, you can live with people shouting at you and calling your names, but to actually spit at you, you know, that is a low form, and, you know, I think anybody would react in that way. It's, you know, it's, it's despicable. You can't say any other word for it, really.